Okay guys, hi there, welcome to another uh, video from Carl's Tech Shed. Um, right, well, sorry I haven't been uh, uploading many videos recently. Um, well, there's three reasons behind that. Uh, first, obviously, I've been uh, looking after my little girl. She's now ten weeks old. Um, the second reason is that it's been bloody cold here in Britain for the past... Uh, three or four weeks. Uh, there's actually been about eight inches of snow here at one point. And uh, well, the third reason is I've got addicted to Skyrim, so I haven't been out here much. Well, anyway, I've got here, what I've got here today is um, I've got a 36.4 gig uh, HP SCSI drive, which was actually in that server there, which I picked up on eBay the other day. Um, the server was actually sold to me as scrap because the um, the BIOS is faulty on it, but uh, I think I've got a way of reflashing that, so that should be okay. But um, when I was when I was checking the drives to see if the drives were okay, uh, this one was incredibly noisy. Uh, I mean, well, SCSI drives are generally more noisy than standard PC drives anyway, but this one, well, it, it's just so noisy. I'll I'll let you hear it. But what I'm going to do in a minute is um, I'm going to take the top off and let you see what's inside it and uh, you'll see that the, amount, the, the noise which this is actually making, I'm pretty sure that it's, it's coming from a faulty bearing but once that goes it, uh, it's dead anyway because um, the bearings are so fiddly to replace and because these drives are made in clean rooms it would be impossible to repair anyway and being only 36.4 gigs there isn't much point so uh, I thought I'd just rip it apart. Now what I've got here is, um, this is this, this black cable here is just an extension of a Molex connector. Um, I've got this little board here I picked up, well, I picked up a few of these on eBay about 18 months ago. Um, it just converts an 80 pin SCSI drive into either a 68 or 50 pin drive but the most, uh, the most handy thing on here is that it has, it's actually got a set of jumpers which allows me to um, power the drive on um, without actually spinning up so you don't need a SCSI cable connected for it to spin up uh, because usually SCSI drives won't power, won't spin up even if the power is connected until they receive a signal from the SCSI controller but this can override that so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug this in As you can hear, it's incredibly noisy. Uh, the green LED on the underside of the board is permanently on. I don't know whether that's because I haven't got a SCSI cable connected or whether it's because the uh, read heads can't pick up any of the data. But um, something's certainly not right with this drive because um, even when I plugged it into my main server here, which is, which is connected to these screens here, um, it wouldn't even show up in the SCSI BIOS so it's it's pretty much a dead drive so um, I thought I might rip it apart anyway I mean, you, if you've been watching my channel before you'll know that I don't like destroying stuff if there's nothing wrong with it but with this it's a, com it's a complete uh, it's just complete scrap there's nothing else I can do with this so um, yeah I'll just uh, take the lid off and uh, see what we can do with it
Well, as you saw there, I did have a bit of trouble getting the lid off of this one, um, simply because there was twice as many screws as I expected, and most of them were hidden underneath the label, which were which was on the top of the drive. Um, I can only assume that the reason these are hidden is to stop people from opening up these drives uh, and then sending them back to the manufacturer as faulty. Um, a lot, as you'll see, a lot of them were under these stickers which uh, are impossible to remove without damaging. Um, most of them were actually under the label of the drive itself containing the serial number, um, which, which, only, which only convinces me of that, of that theory. Right, well as you can see, um, there's not a lot of difference between this and a normal uh, IDE drive or SATA drive. Um, the only difference I can see so far is that this has a lot more metal in it than a standard drive. Most drives um, you generally have around this area just here. Uh, most of this would just be empty um, and it would just be a square or rectangular box with the drive uh, platters sitting inside it. Um, with quite a large air gap around it, but I can only imagine because this is um, because this is a 10,000 rpm drive. Um, that's the reason that they want to prevent uh, as much air friction as possible by blanking off um, or, or preventing uh, a lot of this space from being used as an air buffer. So you've also you've also noticed that we've got. Um, looks like uh, heat sink fins uh, around the edge of it to, um, to dissipate the heat. Now here you've got the um, you've got the rare earth magnets which control the, the reed heads um, and under there you've just got the controller cable which then goes through underneath and would connect to the underside of this PCB here. Now I'm just about to power this on, um, I would expect this to be a lot more noisy than it was without the lid on. Right, that's confirmed. As you can see, the, um, the reed head's making no attempt to to read any of the data or do any form of seek test when the drive is powered up. Um, this is exactly the same as what it did when I connected it to a SCSI controller, so it's not just because I haven't got it connected to a PC. Um, also the seek test is actually initiated from the controller board on the underside of the drive, so it, my assumption is that both the controller board and possibly the bearings in the, in the motor are, are, both, um, are both defective. I must admit I've got my hand just here and even though this is a completely smooth surface I can still feel quite a lot of quite a lot of air pressure. If any of you are wondering what this little container here is, um, this is a little pouch which contains uh, something called silica gel. Um, what this does is it absorbs any moisture that could get into the drive at any point and um, what this does is it just sits uh, just right next to the drive platters just in this little space here like this so um, if any moisture did get into the drive it will absorb it and it won't damage the drive. Well thank you for watching and I'm sure I'll have some more videos up very soon uh, now that the weather's warmer and I can get out here a lot more. Okay, thanks for watching.